Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, so, sorry, just let me start my laser pointer. Um, so I'm a PhD student from Johannian Schmidt's lab from Berlin. And today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about how the order is being processed of factory cortex in the um, scenario of eating. Um, so this is just a work in progress. So it's not a defined uh, project properly. So you will see a lot of stuff is still really preliminary. So let's think about a scenario now. It's dinner time now in Berlin and you're hungry. And now you see this beautiful cake in front of you. You have such a desire that you want to eat it like just right now because you smell the, the chocolate flavor and they give you such a desire. You want to eat it just now. So we know that the olfactory system, the smell of food contributes a lot to appetite. And also reports say that um, patients with eating disorders, they usually also comes with the smell deficiency. So in this context to understand how odor is being represented or how it's being processed during the context of eating become a really important question. And so far it's not really being answered. So my PhD project focused on how the smell of food is being represented in the piriform cortex and during the context of eating. And we did up another um, experiment of can then the animal to start eating really, really fast. So we call it binge eating. So we perform costume imaging in the peripheral cortex. It's in the bottom part of the brain. We use a prison related green lens to relay this. So we can contact this to a miniaturized microscope. So we can do freely moving imaging in the peripheral cortex. We develop one of the uh, self-paced feeding paradigm. So the animal is not necessarily food deprived. We only remove the food five hours before the experiment. So they will be a little bit hungry to actually go here and start eating. And we have a lick spot. They can trigger them and they will receive a flavor milk. In the context, I'm gonna tell later, will be strawberry milk. So this is the video. I hope you can see it. We have a lick spout here. Um, when the animal triggers the lick spout, we will pump one droplet of the strawberry milk here. And around the lick spout, this is a glass tube connected to a suction. So we basically remove the air, uh, the smell around the lick spout. So the animal will only smell something when they poke their nose inside. And you can see this is a miniaturized uh, microscope. So we can see. Uh, the calcium imaging when animals are freely moving and do all the behaviors. So what we found in the first part of my study is that when we deliver different flavors, because we have like different expel combined together, so we can deliver either the milk or the water to the animal. And what we see here is that some peripheral neuron have different activities like lab upper two, they have a less activity when the animal is drinking water and milk. And the other two here, they show more activity when I drinking water or milk. And this is a design that between each trial, there is a um, delivery delay. So they can only activate the pump again after four seconds before uh, after the last one. So there's a, we design in this way to be pretend uh, to prevent the contamination of signals. Um, we can also do to get a much nicer signal from each trial. But we also do something else is that we remove this fermentation so then we can drink as fast as they want. What we found is that when they're drinking really fast, the same neuron color coded here, they basically have almost no activity in the peripheral as shown here. So again, we also control for the speed of leaking and basically it's not really different from when they're uh, drinking a little bit slower or drinking really, really fast. So doing binge eating somehow in the peripheral cortex the neural activity is almost nothing there. So this is the video from the chicken imaging. You can see now there are some spontaneous activity and later on, we'll be get to the moment when the animals start binging. Like now, you barely see any calcium activity anymore. So let's run off for our experiment again. This is how one section of experiment is being done. And what I show you so far is the zooming part of the first, binging, uh, the first drinking boot and also the second binging boot. And you can see here from the calcium events, most of the mineral here are suppressed when they are drinking really fast. 
quick calculation about the calcium events, you can see more than 90% of neuron uh, has a lesser um, calcium event when they're binging. So we later on look a little bit more into how the peripheral neuron process the information from strawberry milk and also from water. You can see here, as lab, we use a AURC. Basically, it's calculating the area on the RC curve represents that when the value is above 0.5 means neurons are more active. Below 0.5, they are more suppressed. You can see when the neurons are receiving, uh, when there's a milk being delivered, some neurons are more active, some neurons are more suppressed. If we use the same sorting order to uh, plot against their activity when the water is being delivered, you don't see a, cloud, a red cloud here, means that uh, those neurons who are responding to milk are less likely to respond to water. We can do the same for waters. So there are some also water positive neurons here, you can see in, in the plot here, and the, do the same using this sorting order for the milk neuron. You don't see much of the responses here. So we pick it up some neurons, like here we can find like around a little bit more than 100 neurons that have a positive uh, activity to milk. and also, they don't have much activity when it's being delivered to water and vice versa for the water mu uh, for the water neuron. So since this effect is quite dramatic, and we apply the machine learning algorithm, uh, super vector machine, and also the random forest classifier, we can get pretty nice accuracy, like above the chance level, which is 0.5 here. And we also have to think about okay, if this um, calcium activity we see so far from the slow eating and also binge eating, can we also classify them? And the result is yes, and it's surprisingly high. So basically we got almost 98% accuracy from this thing, from the classifier. So from the calcium data, we can easily tell whether the animal is now uh, receiving water or receiving uh, milk, or where they are slowly drinking or they're binging. Okay, so let's go back and look at this graph again. We know that during binging, there is a global inhibition take place in the piriform cortex. But where does this inhibition actually come from? We don't know this yet, but we thought about, okay, it could be just locally, there are interneurons participating in this whole behavior. So we start with uh, a chicken imaging in the puff Cree animal. What we found is that surprisingly, during binging, the puff interneurons are also suppressed. You can see there are actually a little bit more activity when they're drinking milk and water, like whether it be slowly, but when I drink it really fast, this activity also goes down. So does it implicate that there are other interneurons taking play? We don't know yet, but uh, other papers from uh, Isakon's lab and also from Anamari Ospa, they have illustrated this inhibitory neuron circuits, and most likely some of the standing interneuron could be taking place here. They can uh, inhibit both excitatory neurons and also the puff interneuron. So we also start to think about whether this is actually effect from neural motivation because like it's a uh, strawberry milk and mouse left them. So this could be just a rewarding system is acting up now. So we start looking into some literatures and found that there's a potential mechanism that in serotonin neurons, if we activate a serotonin neuron as shown here, they do the recording in the prefrontal cortex and activity goes rapidly, almost nothing here. And also when animals drinking sucrose or eating food, you have a much higher activity in the serotonin neuron. So we think this is the potential mechanism like behind the thing. Um, we're now still designing experiments to verify this, whether the effect we're seeing now is actually due to serotonin. And this will be the future experiment. Quick summary about what we have seen so far when animals eating. There are several neurons in the peripheral get lights up, which means these are potentially represent the flavor of this uh, food. And with a list lighting up neurons, they actually contribute to the concept of flavor or appetite, most likely in the orbital frontal cortex. We don't really know yet, so we want to also look into the future whether we see this circuit actually contribute to appetite in the orbital frontal cortex. So when animals are binge eating, like drinking a lot of strawberry milk here, we see almost no responses in the peripheral cortex. 
where does this inhibition come from? Is it actually come from some of the standing interneural or as a modulation effect from serotonin? Or this is like a synergistic effect of both. We don't really know yet, but this will be the future direction. So come back to my uh, very slide. It's about acknowledgement. I want to thank my supervisor, Fridio Johanning and Dima Schmitz on the Charité, for their older support. Um, also for and other people from Schmitz Lab supporting other people, Marleyang, Guiana, and Andreas Klaus. And because also many people helping me, like not necessarily directly linked to this project, but they're all listed here, especially thanks to my partner, Chiche. And my PhD fellowship is funded by Einstein Center, partly from uh, Ministry of Education from Taiwan. Starting from next month, we'll receive from extra funding from Welcome Trust. Welcome to email me or contact me on Twitter with any questions you've got so far. Okay, that's it. All right, thank you so much, Hong. It was a lovely talk. Uh, we already have a question from Pierre Oran, uh, who asks, what uh, would be the purpose of these activities for suppression of the circuit? So this is definitely a big question so far that we haven't really figured it out. Um, we, are two sphere, we have two series right now. And first one is not um, maybe the only neuron, that might be only like 1% of the neuron in the peripheral is actually activating when they are binge eating. And so maybe these are the only important ones that actually contribute to flavor or contribute to appetite. So this global suppression of the neuron uh, of the activity in the peripheral is actually denoising all the other things. So they only focus on one thing. And the other thing is that we're thinking maybe this is not a cause by a serotonin effect, but actually a reason because when you have only a few neurons is actually activating in binge eating, you actually receive much, much less sensory input in the peripheral. So that's why you don't get the sensory satiety in when you're eating. So you actually eat much, much more than you actually should. So these are like two things we haven't really find a way to, um, how to distangle it. And maybe in the end, we could do some either pharmacology or optogenetic stuff to try to see if we can actually understand is this like the reason or this is just a consequence. So we have, we don't really know the idea so far. Uh, thank you. I, I actually had a quick question, mostly because you mentioned interneurons, and I love me some GABAergic interneurons. So you mentioned that the, the uh, parvobumin interneurons decrease their activity, um, and then you mentioned that you have two hypotheses, one about suppression by serotonin and the other by somatostatin. Um, so are you hypothesizing that the circuit is that the somatostatin interneurons are suppressing the PV interneurons? Um, and how does that like PV interneuron suppression relate to the fact that all of the activity, presumably in the excitatory cells goes down? So like in, I don't, maybe I need, don't need to go back. So basically the, it's already been found that serotonin, uh, some of the standing interneuron, they have this effect of suppressing basically everything there, like besides the, probably besides the VIP interneuron, but for the PV interneuron, for excitatory neuron, for other, uh, uh, some of the standing interneuron, they also have this really strong projection to them. So they have a really strong uh, inhibition there. And to link this to serotonin, our lab actually just published paper now is in bioarchive still, it's in adorino codex, and they link this serotonin effect. They can activate actually some of the standing neuron via the 5H2A receptor and uh, suppress the slow oxidation in adorino codex. So I think maybe this um, circuit is also preserved in the peripheral. So it could be like serotonin, there is like sudden serotonin rush when they're binging and serotonin, uh, some of the standing interneuron is activated and suppress everything there in the peripheral. That's so far our working hypothesis. Neat. Uh, we also have uh, Camille uh, posted a link to a paper that she uh, suggested that you might wanna look at in the chat if you wanna take a look. It's about uh, endocannabinoids regulating uh, olfactory bulb activity. Oh yeah, um, I think I know that one. That one is awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome. All right. Um, well, if anyone in the audience has any more questions,